Hello, welcome back to JD Science Prep. Today we are predicting products of double displacement reaction. So as always, if this video helps, please like and subscribe to this channel. So let's jump into it. Um, in this video, we are going to do a quick lesson, take a look at something called the solubility chart, and then do a couple of examples of double displacement reactions. So uh, to start, it says, in a double displacement reaction, the cations of two compounds will switch places in order to form two new compounds. So remember, the cations are the positively charged ions, usually metals. So in this case here, I'm actually going to make this lead 2. We have silver nitrate and lead 2 iodide reacting. And in this double displacement reaction, our two cations are going to actually switch places. So silver and lead 2 will switch places, um, forming compounds with the opposite anion here. So let's write out our products. Uh, we're not worried about our solubility chart quite yet. Um, our first product, I will do silver. So we have silver is now paired up with iodide and lead two is now with nitrate. So we have Pb NO3 two. And the last, uh, the last step is just to balance this quickly. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have two silver iodide, two silver nitrate. We are going to have one lead to nitrate and one lead to iodide. That looks good to me. So one more step here that we have to talk about. Um, it says in order for there to actually be a reaction, something new must be created in the form of a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So we can use this solubility chart right here to figure out what is going to be uh, soluble, what's going to form a precipitate or a solid in other words. Um, but if nothing new is formed, if everything is soluble, there is actually not going to be a reaction. So why don't we take a look at example number one here. Um, we have silver chloride and potassium nitrate reacting. And remember, we just have our cations switching places. So silver and potassium are going to switch anions. So let's write down our compound containing sodium first. So we are going to have sodium nitrate. So we have NaNO3. We're also going to have potassium chloride. So we have K and then Cl. And before we start balancing, let's make sure we actually have a product. Let's make sure we have a, a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Um, in this case, we're probably going to be looking for a solid because we have our ionic compounds as products. Okay, so first off, we are going to look for either sodium or nitrate in this table. And if I zoom in a little bit here, I'll show you this a little bit better. I see nitrate right there at the very top and above it it says soluble ionic compounds so since nitrate is in this soluble ionic compound section this whole section right here and there are no exceptions whatsoever we know that NaNO3 will be soluble and we are going to write down AQ for aqu aqueous, which means dissolved in water or in other words, soluble. Okay. Now let's take a look at KCl as well. I see Cl right there and there are some exceptions. Okay. So when Cl is paired with silver, mercury, or lead two, it's actually insoluble, which will form a solid, but Potassium is not on that list, so it's also going to be soluble, which will make me write AQ for aqueous again. So because both of our products are aqueous, both of our products are soluble, that actually means there's going to be no reaction whatsoever. Okay, Everything will be dissolved in water. All right, so for this one, I'm just going to cross out our products and I can put no reaction. This does not work. So remember when we're doing these double displacement reactions, 
one of our products has to be a solid, liquid, or gas. Usually the liquid is in the form of water, um, but when we're working with these ionic compounds, we're basically looking for solids. Okay, so let's move on to number two. Uh, we have potassium iodide reacting with lead to nitrate. So our lead two and our potassium will be switching places. So let's go ahead and write out our potential products. First, I'll, uh, I'll start with potassium nitrate. So we have KNO3 and our other product will be lead to iodide. So we have PBI2. Now let's use this solubility chart to see if we actually have a product here. So first I'll start with uh, potassium nitrate. So again, nitrate's at the very top here and it's in that soluble section, uh, soluble ionic section, and there are no exceptions at all, which means this is going to be aqueous. And if we look at, let's take a look at iodide here. We have the I negative ion. It is also in the soluble ionic compound section, but I see one exception that applies to this question. When it's paired up with lead 2, it's actually going to be insoluble, which means we are going to have a solid, which also means we have a reaction because something new has been created. Something new has been created in the form of lead, uh, lead 2 iodide. Okay, so that means a precipitate has formed, a solid has been formed when potassium iodide and lead to nitrate are uh, reacted. Okay, so the last step here is to just balance this up. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit neater for ourselves. We can balance this here really quick. So I'll put a 2 in front of potassium iodide and a 2 in front of potassium nitrate as well as a one in front of lead to nitrate and a one in front of lead to iodide. So that is the answer. That's how to uh, predict products for double displacement reactions. If this video has helped, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.